Daring to be Grey. I'm going to read the introduction to you. I was 44 when I dared to allow my hair to be naturally grey, silver white. I say dared because it was not an easy decision to make. My decision was initially based on health reasons and not on being ready to go grey. I will admit that at the time of my decision I was not feeling at all confident. In 2011 I was not feeling my best. I suffered from numerous food allergies, headaches, aching muscles, fatigue and I had put on 5 kilos that just wouldn't budge. A visit to the doctor also revealed that my liver was failing and something needed to be done quickly. At this stage I had been colouring my hair for 20 years. My scalp was nearly always itchy and hair dye had begun to sting every time I dyed. I believed this to be normal, even though deep down I knew better. I was a healthy eater and careful about what I put on my skin, but for some reason I chose to ignore the symptoms caused by hair dye. I was feeling quite low after seeing the doctor, so to cheer myself up I made an appointment to get my hair coloured. While sitting at the hairdresser I had an instant allergic reaction to the hair dye. At first the hair dye stung my scalp slightly more than usual and after a while I felt as though my scalp was burning. I told the hairdresser who shrugged her shoulders and told me it was fine and that lots of people feel a slight stinging. Alarm bells ringing in my mind. I couldn't believe this, that this amount of stinging and burning could be normal. With much persistence I asked the hairdresser to wash the dye of my hair immediately. The hairdresser was somewhat reluctant knowing that the dye had not had enough time to take properly. I was more concerned about my health. By the time I arrived home my scalp was covered in sores and I had a swollen puffy face. I knew this couldn't be right. Surely it shouldn't be this painful to dye your hair. So I started researching. I searched for stories of people who had reacted to hair dye. I researched the chemicals and other issues related to reactions to hair dye and my research showed that several of my other health symptoms could also be related to my reaction to the hair dye. I decided I should take this, this seriously, so with much initial resistance, I made the decision to stop colouring my hair. Within just a few months after I stopped colouring my hair, two remarkable things happened. One, all my health issues went away. Yes, all of them. Within five weeks my liver was back to normal, my weight dropped and I could eat whatever I liked. I'm still healthy at the time of reading this book. And two, I realised that allowing my hair to be its natural colour was a journey to my own true inner confidence. For years I'd used my hair as an excuse to hide. I thought as long as my hair was coloured and cut nicely then I would feel reasonably attractive, I would maintain some inner confidence and all would be well. If only I had known earlier how wrong I was. On my journey to grey, I discovered a true inner confidence that I never even knew existed. After I announced my decision to stop colouring my hair in 2011, I soon became aware of the fear within many women to stop colouring. Women approached me saying how they wished they could stop colouring their hair, but they just didn't dare to. When I asked them why, the majority replied that they would worry about what others might think. Many worried that other people would believe that they had given up on themselves or they were becoming old. Others worried that they would become unattractive, invisible within society or abandoned by their spouses. My lack of an initial enthusiasm for not colouring my hair was not helped when people began to tell me that I was making a mistake. I was told that I would look old, that I would never be able to get a job and that my partner would no longer love me. At first I was upset by these comments, but then I felt annoyed. I began to question who had the right to tell me what colour my hair should be. Did no one care about my health? Was it really more important for me to colour my hair for th than to be healthy and happy? I began to ponder how many women on this planet would actually love to stop colouring their hair, but don't dare to. How many women are pretending that they're okay with the endless colouring, the time, the money and the chemicals? How many of us are pretending in order to please the other half who is also pretending? I know many women who love colouring their hair, but I guarantee you I know more women who wish they could stop. 
I began to question the society we live in. Are we so brainwashed into thinking that we must colour our hair that we don't actually dare to stop colouring? I really wanted to know. Do we live in a society that dictates through habit which colour our hair should be? Most women no longer question whether they will dye their hair. The only decision is which colour. This has become so normal that even teenage girls are regularly colouring. I knew there was only one way to find the answer to my questions, and that was to complete my own personal journey to grey. On a daily basis, we question what we eat, our health, our environment. We're concerned about the air that we breathe, the water we drink, and the chemicals we put in our products. Yet most women do not question putting chemical hair dyes on their scalp, chemicals that seep through the skin directly to the brain. Why do we avoid questioning this? Because we've been led to believe that grey equals old. I used to be guilty of this. I coloured my hair for 20 years in fear of being old. Now I wish I'd stopped colouring sooner. In fact, I wish I had never coloured my hair to begin with. So how do you dare to stop colouring your hair? Where do you start? How do you cope with the negative comments from others? How do you find the confidence within you to take this journey? You can find these questions and more answered in this book. Are you ready to take your daring to be grey journey?